Suburban Sentinel here, along with Bella the Camera Cat, talking ammunition. Specifically, we're talking about the economics of the current ammunition market. In fact, let's coin a new term here. Let's call it ammonomics. Remember, you heard it here first. Several people have asked me whether there's any relief in sight with respect to the high cost of ammunition. And I wish I had a crystal ball, but I don't, so I will give you my best guess. Long before the elementary school massacre in Newtown, the supply of ammunition had been relatively tight. Starting with the 2007-2008 election season, people were buying up ammunition at a very fast rate. And this only accelerated after Obama won the 2008 election. When rumblings of gun control started to make their way through Congress after the Aurora uh, movie theater shootings, the pace of ammunition sales grew even faster and supplies tightened even more. After Sandy Hook, the politicians really started pushing the gun control agenda and arms and ammunition sales went crazy. We had new gun owners buying ammunition in droves. We had existing gun owners hoarding ammunition. And we had a small percentage of businesses and individuals profiteering. And all of this caused a big ammo shortage. This shortage was exacerbated by large purchase orders and commitments from government agencies for vast quantities of ammunition. The result is that since the Newtown massacre, the price of ammunition has more than doubled. Just yesterday, the U.S. Senate tossed out all of these crazy gun control proposals. So the question is, what is going to happen with the availability and price of ammunition? First, let's talk availability. It's no secret that over the last few months, store shelves have often been devoid of ammunition supply. As there is no imminent threat of increased gun restrictions at the national level, the demand for ammunition should ease and allow the supply to catch up. It certainly won't happen overnight because demand is still very strong. But in the coming months, we should be returning to a situation where ammunition is at least available. What about prices? Well, unfortunately, I don't expect much price relief in either the short term or the long term. I believe that demand will remain very strong because people understand that the political situation can change very quickly. Also, new shooters are still buying ammunition, and as prepping becomes increasingly popular, that will also put pressure on the supply. Despite the strong demand, I believe that ammunition manufacturers are unlikely to take the steps to drastically increase their production capabilities. Again, the political environment is very volatile. It would be pretty risky to invest in new facilities and equipment and personnel to ramp up production to a great degree. Also note there is still a lot of price pressure on the raw materials used to make firearms and ammunition. Copper, zinc, aluminum, steel, all are still in high demand from the developing world. In addition, the high cost of petroleum and other energy sources make mining the raw materials such as copper and zinc even more expensive. And of course, this puts price pressure on the finished products. I believe that ammunition manufacturers will have to spend a serious amount of money to secure the raw materials necessary to continue production. 
So I don't really see prices on retail ammunition going down very much at all. So the bottom line is I predict that ammunition will remain very expensive for the foreseeable future. I know this is all kind of a bummer, but let's look for the silver lining. When you have high prices, it encourages innovation. I'm sure that there are some really smart folks out there looking to solve this problem and make a profit doing so by changing the way we shoot. Advances in metallurgical technologies are always a possibility. Perhaps steel and aluminum cased ammunition will become more popular as those technologies advance. And also look for either incremental or big leaps in technology in the shooting industry. For many years now, several companies have been working on caseless cartridges. And if that technology is perfected, the way we shoot and the materials we use might be fundamentally altered. Now, all this talk of innovation is nicey-nice, but what do we do today? None of this speculation helps us now. So where do we go from here? Well, the first thing I say is continue to buy ammunition, look for value, and don't hoard. Hoarding puts tremendous pressure on inventories and therefore prices. I think one of the best things we can do as individuals is to either join or start an ammunition buying club. Years ago, a few friends and I started our own ammo buyers club, and we've been in continuous operation ever since, and it's worked out really well. In fact, I made a video about it, and I'll put the link to the video at the beginning of the comments section. By consistently making high-value ammunition purchases over time, the four members of our group have been able to stockpile a significant amount of ammunition. And this has allowed us to ride out the shortage of the last couple of years without any problem. I've been able to stockpile more than 10,000 rounds of ammunition for each caliber weapon my wife and I own. It took a while, it didn't happen overnight, but by doing it consistently, and in our club we do it on a monthly basis, your supply will steadily grow with a modest contribution of resources. So that is my unscientific and inexpert assessment of the current state of the ammunition market. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Please thumbs up and subscribe if you like what you see. Questions and enlightening comments are always welcome. Shoot safely, everybody.